Well, it's been a few weeks since my last video on my haunted Halloween facade. I've made some pretty good progress. I've been working on framing the remaining flats I needed for the second story of my haunted hotel, and I'm uh, working on the finishing, how to age the wood, and that's what's coming up next. All right, so I've got the middle section framed up here with the door. I have both of these uh, sides at 22 and a half. So when they join up to one of the two sides here, they form a 45 degree angle. So this thing will ultimately come out, go that way. So it'll be a complete corner. And this door is gonna be the middle section. So I did the, the long points on these boards at 48 inches. So my sheet of plywood will cover. The total height is 96 inches, which means these studs on the edges are 94 and a half. And then what I did was I just measured out my door opening to scale, which is only five foot eight. And then I did it at a little bit of an angle just to give it a little bit of cartoony off kilter kind of look. So uh, five foot eight, five foot nine, and just two feet in between. So that left these little pieces I had to cut an angle, 22 and a half on these sides here, and then just straight. So I just measured between that point and here and cut them straight up. And then uh, up here at the top, this one's about 45, long point to long point, and then this last piece up here is like 22 and a half. So I just put it all together the same, joined it with staples, use the uh, pocket holes on some of these pieces where I really wanted to uh, make sure we had a good connection. All that's left is to skin that, and then I think I'm gonna be moving out to a larger space in order to assemble the walls and then start putting on some more of the front details. Okay, framed up one of the second stories. This is the middle section that is going to go right up here once I get it outside, right above the door. So this is uh, the window framed in. This is a uh, four feet by four feet square. And I just kind of eyeballed this window. It's supposed to be two foot by two foot, but I kind of wanted it to be a little off kilter just like everything else. So 24 at the bottom here, 23 or 22 at the top. And I just kind of lean those in. A little bit and this is about an inch and a half uh, drop across the top there and again I did these sides at the 22 and a half on both sides I almost forgot but so that's so when we put them all together here it'll form the outside corner now some other stuff I've been doing I framed up another or trimmed out another window here and I'm kind of laying out some sections for this bottom deck. So I'm gonna have a deck with some boards to be kind of like a boardwalk. Goes around the outside. I got all the pieces cut except for my last piece out here. I kind of mock it up first before I put everything together just to make sure I get the angles right. And I did something similar with one by fours to go up here for the, the roof deck and the balcony for the second story. So that's the height that the roof deck is gonna be at. So my second story actually starts here, and then in the middle is gonna be four feet up from there. So a total of 12 feet, but this is about six foot six right here. Just tall enough for me to walk under most adults. And uh, here's the sections of uh, second story roof deck or uh, balcony deck that I've uh, mocked up and I already had them laid out and on there and making everything modular so you can see my bolt holes here where they're gonna go in and on the back side here I have bracing so I'm gonna use a, a bolt two and a half inch bolt two big washers and decided to use a wing nut so I can put these together by hand and as you can see I have the, the two sections the two wall panels also connected on both sides with three 
wing nuts, this one's here, and one at the bottom. About outgrown the garage, but I'm going to build these sections first and skin them with the uh, eighth inch plywood. And once I get those section, this one middle one done and the two side sections for the roof done, I'm going to start moving to the backyard and assembling. Hopefully the weather cooperates with me back there. All right, so I've got the second story flats all um, framed and skinned. Got the window carved in on the uh, middle section here, or trimmed out. And that's gonna go right up here. So we're gonna have a little window, a little bit bigger window, taller section with the sign, and then the other little window there. And uh, in a little while, I'm gonna get some one by six and kind of cap this off on all those sections. Let's go back and look how I framed it. So if you saw my first video on framing the flats, I kind of did the same methodology. I framed the perimeter out and then I laid out how I wanted the windows to look. Now, if you notice, these windows are much smaller in scale compared to these ones, but they're similar shape and size. That way, once it gets up and we put the balcony on right about here, so this portion will be the second story as well, and then the additional three to four feet. On top of that, to kind of force the perspective a little bit to make it look taller and further away by making the features smaller. So, not sure how much more I'm going to be able to do in the garage, but we're still getting rain in the afternoons, and it's very humid right now, so I kind of want to keep working in the garage as much as possible, but this is where we're at. I need to make one more of these braces before I move it outside for, for right here, because so I really don't want to get this thing outside and get it rained on, wind blow, blow the thing over and ruin it. So <clears throat> it's funny, I'm concerned about rain just because I don't want this plywood and stuff to start puffing up, but we do need to age it. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. All right, well, I've got some samples of stain and different aging techniques. Um, one that I've heard of is the vinegar and steel wool method, which I have mixed up in that bucket. And that's what I have here on this plywood. I'm very happy with the way it turns out on the plywood. It really ages it quickly. Next here is just some stain that uh, is a weathered gray color. And this one is a briar smoke um, that I've used before. And um, this is full strength, this has thinned quite a bit. So what I've done is also I've taken some of the one by fours that I'm gonna be using for deck plates. This is the raw, unfinished, just as this plywood is. And this is what it looks like with the vinegar and steel wool, which turned out quite a bit lighter and I'm not happy with the way it really looks on that pine compared to this birch ply. And uh, then this is the gray on the wood, which I'm pretty happy with. And this is the thinned briar smoke. So of all those, this is an actual aged piece of wood. I think the aged gray looks the best. So what I think I'm gonna do is for the pine, the one by fours that are gonna be exposed, I'm gonna use the weathered gray stain. And then for the plywood, I'm gonna actually use the vinegar and steel wool method. And here I was just testing to see if I could stain over it, how it would take that weather gray stain after I did the aging. So if I have some parts that aren't quite dark enough, I might do that. But for the most part, I think vinegar and steel wool on the plywood and stain on the one by fours because it just didn't, it was 
steel wool and vinegar method just didn't give it a dark enough color as you can see compared to the raw and uh, for the vinegar and steel wool all you do is you get let's say a gallon of vinegar and you put you unravel one pad of steel wool and you leave it in there for about four or five days it'll dissolve it stir it up add a gallon of water and then that way it's a cheap way to stain a lot or age a lot of um, surface area so luckily the plywood is the biggest surface area i have and that's the method i'm going to use for that plywood all right so i have one of my flats here that i've painted the inside black just so it doesn't show up uh, so much at night kind of blends in and uh, i'll go ahead and flip it over and show you the vinegar technique So since it's pretty thin, just use a cheap uh, brush to start on one end and just coat the whole thing. pretty early on in the process so the vinegar is just dried on there and you can already see the color difference and that'll continue to develop after a couple more hours and I'll show you what it's gonna look like when it's all done so this is a finished section where I did the vinegar on the plywood and I used the uh, weathered gray stain on these strips and around the uh, trim so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out for my old rustic look. And there's a, a flat that I still need to do. So you can see the contrast between the two finishing techniques. All right, so I've stained some of the trim work here. And all I really do is I just hold up, I have a few scraps here and I know what I want it to kind of look like. And I just mark where I want the short end of my cut to be and I'll make that, oops. Actually, I'm gonna come out a little bit to about right here and uh, cut it off that way. And then I'll trim these sharp corners off and cut some actual pieces to go here and at the bottom. Okay, so there's that piece. Now I'm gonna turn to the bottom here. And I kinda wanna do the same thing. I wanted to going to be up on end like this and I kind of want it to have about an inch and a half overhang and again I just estimate this because you know it doesn't have to be exact and it can uh, look a little off and, and hopefully spooky. I'm going to have to do some touch up staining on all my cut edges here and I'll do that shortly but first I'm just going to measure between these two to get the side pieces cut and then I'll touch up the stain and get ready to attach. And for this, you can either use a tape measure or I just hold it in place here and just strike a line. So I got the actual angle that it needs to be at and the length all in one. All right, and that's a quick and easy way to get all the trim pieces cut out for to go around the window. And that's the technique I'm gonna use on all the other windows as we go. So just real quick on how I stain this. Um, I've already kind of distressed it a little bit um, by using a chisel or my chamfer bit on the edges. I'll probably show you that in, a, in another video, but um, I just use, for small surface areas, I just dip my fingers with a piece of old rag and wipe it on. And it goes on pretty gray. But then you go back with the clean part and you can get some of that wood grain to show through and any imperfection on there will be 
um, amplified. And the pieces, the top and bottom, that have a piece of framing behind it, I uh, like to pre-drill and put a couple 5 8 screws in it. last two pieces I just shoot those in with the nail gun. All right so really the final part on this um, facade is to cut some um, furring strips here to three foot and put them every one in or one foot on center um, one on each edge and uh, and I'm, I have a pressure treated 2x4 from a previous project that I'm going to use to, to cap it off at the top. So that about wraps it up for this video. Um, if you liked what you're seeing and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so when I release my next video in the series you get a notification if you hit that bell. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And in the next video, I'm hoping to get this thing moved out back and more fully assembled and uh, get the finish done. I'm painting the inside of this right now and hopefully get the rest of this painted, outside vinegared, and all the trim wood that's going to go on um, for the details on the outside all stained. So. Hopefully by the time I uh, post the next video, I'll have all that done and I'll keep you up to date. Bye. Subscribe now. Resistance is futile.